Hey guys, it's Alyssa from AlyssaNalani.com. Welcome back to my channel. As you saw from the title of this video, today I'm going to be talking about my updated Bible study in a bullet journal. I say updated because last year I did my original Bible study in a bullet journal video, which you can check out if you'd like. And I still get comments on that video. So people are telling me that it has given them inspiration and it's helped them in kind of um, developing a system of their own. And that makes me really happy to know that uh, something that helped me um, was is helping somebody else. Now I also say updated because since that time I ran into a couple of challenges with that method and decided that I needed to modify it. And before I open up this journal and explain to you kind of what I've got going on now, I am going to lay some groundwork and kind of set the stage so you know where I'm coming from. Okay, so in my original Bible study bullet journal video, um, this was the journal that I opened up and showed, and this is the book that I referenced, kind of where I got some of the ideas from. Now, if you have not read this book and you do not own a copy, you need to do both. <laughs> you need to read it for yourself, and you need to um, have a copy on your shelves for later reference. This is one of my favorite Bible study tools. It's super, super practical, super easy to put into practice. That's what practical means. Um, and it's a very, very easy read. I like the way Jen Wilkin writes, the way she speaks. She just has a way of explaining things well and really driving home the importance of Bible study and Bible literacy and why we need to do this well and how it will impact our lives when we do so. So, Get a copy of this book. There's a link in the description for both the hard copy and the audio. I first listened to it on audio. She reads it herself. It was really great. And then I got a copy um, for my shelves for future reference. So I highly encourage you to do the same. Next, this is, like I said, this is the journal that was in my first video. And I'm just going to open it up briefly and show you what my method was. So... It was really very simple. Um, for a full kind of explanation of how it, it worked for me, you can check out the video. But basically, I wrote um, the passage that I was studying in black. Then I wrote the cross-references, because I was using my study Bible, and my study Bible had cross-references. I wrote those in pink. And then any notes or any thoughts and observations, um, I would write in blue. So, and, and that's what I would do. So I would, you know, read, write down the verses, write down the cross-reference verses if there were any. And then whenever I felt like it was a good time to stop and reflect, I would write down my thoughts and observations. And then as you can see, scattered throughout the pages, I've got um, pictures that I would print off of Pinterest and cut out. And I've got stickers from my planner stash just to give it some um, page appeal. <laughs> just to make it pretty to look at and to kind of break up the text because there are a lot of words on the page when you're doing something like this. So I just wanted to add some pretty in there. And so that's what I would do. And um, I was doing the Book of Philippians at the time and it worked well, kind of. <laughs> and I say kind of because what ended up happening was, um, give me a second, I gotta take a drink of water. What ended up happening was I would spend so much time writing down the scripture that I didn't have enough time to actually study the scriptures. So in other words, you know, you know how it is. We only have so much time for Bible study or quiet time or whatever. And I was spending so many of those minutes just writing down the text, which is a good practice. Scripture writing is an extremely profitable practice that's highly beneficial. I highly suggest it if you don't do it to definitely get into some kind of scripture writing practice, um, even if it's just a verse or two a day. Nothing wrong with it at all. But I was here to study, and I wasn't studying, I was just writing. So I thought, okay, I need to modify this because this isn't working for the depth of my study. It's giving me some breadth, but it's not giving me any depth. So I need to modify it. So I went back to the drawing board, which means I went back to YouTube. <laughs> So I could hopefully find something that would work for me better, um, something that I could sink my teeth into when it came to my Bible study. Okay, so that was the first thing that was happening. There was also something else happening. So I'm going to move this aside 
and bring this on. The second thing that was happening was I decided that I wanted to get a new Bible and start a new round of taking notes and highlighting. So I have a study Bible that I've been using for years, almost a decade. And um, it's well-worn, it's well-loved, it's been used for, like I said, quite some time. And I'm not ready to shelf it or anything, like it's still gonna be used. But uh, when I first got it, I didn't have like a system for um, highlighting and I didn't have a system for taking notes. And so when I go through it, it's, you know, all the notes and the, and the colors and things are rather haphazard. I kind of halfway through using it, I did kind of um, come up with a system that I've sort of landed on, but there's still some sections where there's not really any rhyme or reason. And the same thing with my notes. So I decided that I wanted something that I could kind of start fresh on and practice kind of developing a system of well thought out notes that I re could record in a Bible and keep for a long time. So that when I flip through the pages, um, there's some there's some method and there's some rhyme and reason to what's going on in my comments on the page. I also wanted to try out a wide margin Bible, which my study Bible is not. It's just got regular margins, not a whole lot of space. So I wanted to start um, with a wide margin Bible so I got this. It's not fancy. It's, um, I mean, it's beautiful, but it doesn't really have a lot of features. It is a King James, which is kind of like my baseline translation that I use. Grew up on the King James. It's, it's uh, uh, something that I'm very used to, but I also parallel read with other translations. I'll get to that in a second, but it doesn't have um, a whole ton of features. It has the wide margins. As you can see, I washied the edge here. So I'll get into that in a second. But um, it's got the wide margins with lines. Um, the paper is a little thicker than regular Bible paper, which makes it nice um, for pen and, and highlighter. It does have the words of Christ in red, which is nice, but it doesn't have any references. So there's no cross-reference verses, which on the one hand I would have liked, but on the other hand, it gives me a chance to put in my own cross-references. Okay, so that's the second thing that was going on. I wanted to kind of reset with a new Bible that I could um, practice with more systematic coding and note taking. Okay, third thing, one more thing before I get into the meat of this video. Third thing was that I wanted to try out the ESV scripture journals. So these have been out for some time. They're still fairly new, but they've been out for a little bit, and you can get them in all 66 books of the Bible. Um, Crossway released the New Testament first, and then the Old Testament, and it's a great product, in my opinion. When my husband and I first saw it, we were kind of like, oh my goodness, what a great concept. And so it's literally, as you can see, this is the book of Proverbs, it's literally the text on one side, and on the other side, you've got room to journal. And that's it. And the type font, the layout of the text is really nice. Um, it is in the English Standard Version, which is one of the versions that I piggyback or kind of parallel read with, um, with my baseline with the King James. And so I thought, you know, I wanted to maybe like later this year um, get, my, get a whole set of like the New Testament. But as I was kind of thinking through this process, um, of, of doing like a new Bible study method for myself, I thought, you know what, I want to kind of sink my teeth into a different book and do kind of like a line by line, verse by verse study. Let's pick one up, decided to get Proverbs, because that's kind of where I wanted to land right now. And just kind of give it a try, um, take it for a test run and see what happens. So that is where I'm at. Okay. That's the groundwork. That's the backstory. That is where I've landed. Now let's get into <laughs> what I'm actually here to talk about. And that's this bullet journal that I am now using for Bible study. Okay, so I mentioned before that I went back to the drawing board, which just basically means I got on YouTube and started doing some research. And I landed on this video um, by a gentleman, can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, it's, it's linked in the description for you, so you can check it out. But um, he did a video about, um, Jonathan Edwards miscellanies, which is not something I've ever heard of. But when I started watching the video, I was like, oh yeah, I remember Jonathan Edwards. He's a 
preacher guy that was featured in my American literature book way back in high school. Um, they had a passage, or maybe the whole thing, but they had um, his sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God in my American literature textbook. And uh, I remembered his name. He was a preacher during the Puritan era, back in the 1700s. And um, I later found out at, through watching this video that he was a prolific uh, writer, note taker, theologian, philosopher dude. And he took these massive notes, which are available to this day for people to refer to, read, and reference. And um, he called this collection of notes his miscellanies. And so the guy in the video explained how he was taking that concept and doing it himself. And as I was watching this video, I was like, oh my goodness, this is like bullet journaling, but with an added feature, which is super stinking cool when it comes to Bible study. And I'm going to show you. This is how I've set it up for myself. So uh, true to the tradition of bullet journaling, I've got a key in the front. This is not a regular bullet journal key. This one uses letters and it's real simple. I use V for vocabulary words, N for the meaning of names, H for um, history. And this can either be personal history or contextual history. So if I'm um, reading about somebody in the Bible and I have some notes about their past or their history, where they came from, you know, you know, the context of, of what they're doing in the story, then that's personal history. And then contextual history is just like the general context of what's going on um, in relation to the passage that I may be reading. And then Q is for quotes and then C is for commentary. So I can quote anybody. <laughs> Um, that's not uh, any non-biblical -bibl reference. And then commentary is not a direct quote from a commentator, but kind of my uh, commentary from somebody else, but in my own words, if that makes sense. So if I'm writing a note, I can put a C in there and say this came from somebody else's commentary, but it's not necessarily a direct quote. Hope that made sense. So that is my key as it stands right now. And then I just titled it The Miscellanies, Volume 1, because um, in theory, I should, over the years, um, have more of these volumes. <laughs> okay, so pause. Let me just tell you about this notebook really quick. This is the same line as this purple one. These are artist loft journals that you can get at Michael's. They're like six, seven bucks a piece. Super cheap. They're not like... The best quality like they're not fancy or anything like that but they hold up pretty well and because I was trying this out for the first time I didn't want to spend a whole ton of money on a journal for something that I hadn't um, you know fully tested hadn't proven was something that was going to work for me so I went the cheap route here now this purple one is dot grid I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up this is dot grid. Um, they have two bookmarks, two ribbon bookmarks, which is really nice. Um, the one that I ended up with for this project is just regular grid. You can also get it lined and you can also get it blank, but those two are not my preference. I prefer grid either in square or in dot. Okay, the first couple of pages they designate for your index. So this is meant to be used like a bullet journal, at least in my estimation, because it's set up that way. So you have space for your index. And in the miscellanies, I guess, original method, at least the way the gentleman described it in his video, is he, so let me turn to a blank page, he, um, took the number of pages that the book had, so let's say it had 500 pages, that's a thick book. <laughs> Let's say it had 300 pages. It doesn't matter. This is an example. Let's say it had 300 pages. He would then go to the front pages, the front, the first lined pages, and number one through 300 in his, you know, creating an index of sorts for himself. I don't, and, and those would be his page numbers, okay? I don't write notes that only take up one page. So I don't pre-number mine. The page numbers go on this side and I write them in as I'm done with the note. So when I'm done with a note, you know, it took three pages, this first one. So I write pages one to three. 
okay? Then you have the title of the note, and then you have the number or the number title or whatever you want to call it of the note itself. So this is M for miscellanies. This is miscellany number one, intro notes to Proverbs, and it's pages one through three. And then you've got M002, um, my notes on Proverbs one, two to seven, and then it um, takes up pages four to five. Okay, so that's how the index works. Now we come to my first note, and I'm going to just kind of briefly go over how I've set this up. This is the 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 concept of miscellanies is really what I want to, is really what I want to focus on, not how I actually construct my notes. But if this works for you, if it's something you want to try, go for it. We all kind of take notes differently, so this the method. It, of the note itself is not really what I'm focusing on, but just the concept of keeping miscellanies. Okay, anyway, so what I did was, when I was reading Proverbs, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna open a Proverbs here in my Bible. So I'm reading, open my Bible, I'm reading, right? And the first verse is, the Proverbs of Solomon, king, um, son of David, king of Israel. All right, so I want to write a few intro notes here because that verse has some important information. It tells you who Solomon is, what his job is, and that these Proverbs are from King Solomon. Okay, so I wrote some notes here. I wrote down V for vocabulary and wrote Proverb and looked it up in the Strong's. Oh, yeah. Ha ha ha. Study tip. You want a pro tip? Make use of a concordance. Now, I have an actual concordance. This is an actual Strong's Concordance. You can get them at the Christian bookstore. They are huge. <laughs> they are quite chunky, exhaustive. Uh, it's well-named because this is quite exhaustive. A concordance, if you've never seen one, you've never used one, is just the collection of um, words um, from the Bible, and then it gives you the original language. If that made you feel overwhelmed, don't worry. You don't need one of those. I happen to have one. I've had one for quite some time. You don't need one. You can go online to blueletterbible.com and all of that information in that book is on that website plus some. So if you want to do vocabulary um, words in your Bible study, you're going to love Blue Letter. If you have any questions about that, let me know. But um, I like to look up the original words, especially since I'm parallel reading, because I like to see, okay, which version may have rendered it better, or um, what did it actually say in the original when I've got two versions that have, you know, different, um, different renderings or different wording. Um, so I find that I'm, I'm nerdy like that. I find that interesting. So anyway, I looked up the word proverb in the original Hebrew and then wrote down the definition that was in the concordance. Same thing for the name of Solomon. Do you know that Solomon means peace in the original Hebrew? And then I have some historical personal notes, some personal historical notes about Solomon. And then I have some commentary um, from a commentator. And then I have a quote from a book um, that references King Solomon. And that was my whole note. Okay, that was my whole note on the introduction to Proverbs. Now, let's say that as I'm reading, I'm studying, I find something else and I'm like, oh my goodness, I want to add something else to my intro notes to Proverbs. Well, I have a little bit of space here, but let's say I ran out. Y'all, this is a bullet journal, right? So all I have to do is, let's say I'm down here, like I've, I've gone several pages, but I want to add more to my intro notes to Proverbs. And so I'm down here. I've got all these notes here. All I got to do is write M00 whatever number it is and then write intro to Proverbs, and then write the page numbers. Now, I don't know if I, I actually just thought of this. I don't know if I would call it whatever number is next in the line, or would I call it miscellany number one? Would it just be a continuation of miscellany one? I don't know. I, I literally just thought about that. I don't know what I would call it. But either way, you can either call it the same number as the title of the miscellany, the original miscellany, or you can assign it just the next number miscellany in line. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. 
again, if you have any questions, let me know. So I'm going to take my pen because I have written more than two miscellanies. Okay. So I'm going to take my pen. Okay. I have reference number two. Okay. So now I've got miscellany number three. I'm going to write miscellany number three. So, oops, that's a new pen. It hasn't even been, you know how there's a little guard on the tip. The guard hasn't been taken off. So I'm going to write M003. And the notes are from Proverbs 1, 8 to 19. Proverbs 1, 8 to 19. And the pages, I haven't even numbered the pages yet, you guys. This is pages 6 and 7. I'm starting another miscellany here. Okay, so this is pages six and seven, and that's how that goes. Okay, and then you just keep going on and on as it goes on. Okay, that's my doorbell. I gotta go get the doorbell. Okay, so that's how the miscellanies work in the notebook. Now, I said that this is like bullet journaling, but with a really cool feature. Get this. Okay, so this is my scripture journal. Okay, this is what I'm reading and also taking notes in. So because I want this to have like systematic, well thought out notes and well thought out like color coding, I haven't made any marks in here yet because I'm still kind of in the beginning process. I don't know yet what I wanna put in these margins, but I do want a space to just kind of um, have observe and, and um, work out my thoughts on paper. So I'm doing it here in the notebook, but I can also do it in a scripture journal. Okay. So here's Proverbs in the ESV in a scripture journal. And the circles are just words that I am considering for vocabulary. So if I'm reading it here, I can write down what it's, what that word is in the King James. I can look it up in the, um, in the concordance and then make note of it in here. I'm, I'm kind of playing around with this, but here's the really cool thing, okay? So you've got your text and you've got your miscellanies, okay? So this was the intro notes to Proverbs, my intro notes to Proverbs. So what I did was that first verse, the Proverbs of King Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, I boxed it, I highlighted it in gray, and I drew an arrow and wrote my miscellany number, number 001 intro notes. So that when I'm in here, or I'm in here, and I'm gonna do the same thing in here. Okay, so I'm gonna box this. And again, I'm still kind of trying to figure out what marking method I'm gonna use. I'm gonna box this, and then I'm gonna write a note that um, corresponds and say that in my miscellaneous journal, I've got a note that references the first verse of Proverbs. So in here, it's gonna say M001. So in whatever Bible you're using, you can cross-reference it with your journal so that when you're in your Bible later on, you can say, oh yeah, I've got this note in my miscellaneous journal where I expand on the notes. So you don't have to have a Bible, like a scripture journal, that has a ton of space for notes. You don't have to have a Bible that has wide margins to do this. You can have a smaller Bible, for instance, hold on. I've got this small... This is a bitty, a little bitty ESV, the whole text. So even if I had something small like this that doesn't have a lot of space for notes, I can box off or highlight or underline a passage or whatever, or just right next to it, take my pen and write M, well, not in Jeremiah. <laughs> uh, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Proverbs, okay. Um, so I can be here in Proverbs. Ha, huh, the bookmark was already there. I can be in Proverbs and I would box off or underline or highlight whatever note take or um, marking system that I, that I want to do and write there M001. And now I've cross-referenced it with my miscellaneous journal. And that's the brilliance of this particular kind of note-taking method. It's like a bullet journal in how it functions but it has that added feature where you cross-reference it with whatever Bible you're using so that you can take as many notes as you want and go pages and pages and pages of notes um, 
you know, on whatever you're reading. You can write your cross-references. If your Bible doesn't have cross-references, you can definitely write them in a text, but you can also write them in here. You can write out the cross-references the way I was doing in this journal. You can do it however you want, um, but you have the space to kind of explore your thoughts and observations, which I had the space in here. I was just spending too much time writing out the actual scriptures. But this way, you're kind of staying in tandem with your, um, with your actual text, you know, your actual Bible, and then having um, a place to write some organized notes in there. So regardless of what kind of Bible you use, whether you have something that's more like this, or you've got wide margins, or you've got like a journaling Bible, or you've got, if you're using something like this, you can use a notebook with miscellanies in tandem with it, okay? Now, one more thing I wanted to point out is the ESV, or the scripture journals, they only come in the ESV. Like, Crossway is the only one, I think, who does this. And Crossway is the publisher of, of ESV. So let's say you didn't want to read the Bible in the ESV. It's not your particular preference for Bible translation. You can always go online and just print out the Bible <laughs> on paper and use it to take notes. Put it in a notebook. Um, you can even put it, let's say, this is not a good example, but let's say you... Um, you know, made a notebook, you can put one page of text and then have a blank space for notes. You can do it, this is half size paper because I wanna be able to slip it into the leaves of my big Bible. So I print it on a half size paper, um, but you can print it on full sheets and then just make your um, margins um, big and then use um, bigger spacing so that you can write and highlight and, and um, take notes in between the lines and not worry about having to write on the pages of a Bible and potentially mess it up. Does that make sense? So, you know, definitely try that out if that's something that you um, wanna do. If you don't feel comfortable writing in your Bible yet, if you, like me, bleh, like me, want to kind of preserve <laughs> this space for well thought out notes, um, you can work those notes out in other places, like a notebook, like a printed copy of the text, like a scripture journal. This is the N NASB, this is Proverbs in the NASB. I just copied and pasted it and then pasted it and then reformatted it on a document and printed it out. And it was so easy, so stinking easy. So anyway, that's a little bit more than just Bible study in a bullet journal. <laughs> but this is the method that I'm using now, and this is kind of what I'm playing around with. My plans for the future are as follows. If you are interested, I am open to doing kind of like a Bible study with me style video where I kind of take you through me going through the text and doing the vocabulary and doing the, you know, the notes and stuff in here, as well as in my scripture journal. Um, yeah, I'm open to doing kind of like a Bible study with me type video. Also, what I'm playing around with, and I wasn't really planning on announcing it, but what I'm playing around with is actually doing kind of a video series on what I'm learning in the book of Proverbs. So there's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. <clears throat> and I'm thinking of doing like a series of videos where I'm talking about some of the main themes or points that I've pulled from Proverbs in my own personal study in hopefully in an effort to either get you to study the book of Proverbs or another book of the Bible. Um, you can use it kind of in your devotions or, you know, whatever, just kind of as a resource. I would love to do a Bible study kind of series here on the channel. Not because I've got like great insight, <laughs> because I don't, um, but because one of the better ways, one of the best ways of learning is teaching what you have learned. And so I kind of want to stretch my, stretch my wings in that area and become a better student by being able to explain what I've learned, being able to teach it um, 
to somebody else in hopefully it would be a benefit to somebody else. So those are my plans. Bible study with me type video and then a series of videos where I go through the book of Proverbs and just kind of have it here on the channel for future reference. So if you are interested in any of that, let me know because I kind of like, I need a little bit of a push, a little bit of encouragement because that's kind of a daunting task. Both of those are kind of a daunting task. So let me know if something you're interested in. Let me know if you have any questions about anything that I've shown you. I hope that it was understandable. Um, yeah, this, this, this is a lot and I'm really excited about it. And I was telling my husband the other night, once you get started with this, it's addicting. Like the nerdiness in me comes out and it's super addicting and I'm really enjoying it. So I hope it's something that if you don't do it exactly the way I did, there was enough in here, there were enough ideas to kind of get your brain going and thinking about how you might try it for yourself if you need a method of your own. I'm gonna leave it at that before I rabbit trail into something else and end this video. <laughs> Again, any questions, let me know. Let me know if you're interested in the types of videos that I've just described and yeah, follow me on Instagram because I will kind of be teasing some of this out um, in the future. Yeah, I think that's it. All the links for all the things are in the description. So the books, where I got stuff, where you can get it, the um, website where you can look up the concordance, so on and so forth. Um, oh, also, if, and this is like a stretch, if you want me to demonstrate how to use the concordance, I can do that too. Like if that's something you're interested in, you've never seen it used, you would like to see it used, I can do that. Just let me know. Okay, now I'm really ending the video. I hope you guys are doing great. I will talk to you in the next video. Have a great rest of the day and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Hold on, I need to make one more note. So you know how in this journal, I had all kinds of pictures and stickers and lots of pretty things going on. Okay, so you didn't see any of that in this journal, but that does not mean that this journal will be all black and white and gray. Like, I was just testing out my method of note-taking. In the future, I, I intend to make these miscellanies a lot prettier and more like my style. So I just wanted to add that in case you were like, well, it's not like, it's not as pretty. That's okay. I, I plan to make it pretty and you can do the same thing. Like you don't have to just, that's a lot of text. <laughs> and we can make this, we can make this pretty if that is what we want. So anyway, I just wanted to add that on. Okay, bye. Thanks for watching.